Hello, my name is Jim Schall, and I am an instructor for Federal Highway Administration training delivered under the National Highway Institute. The National Highway Institute, or NHI, is the training branch of the Federal Highway Administration. The videos you are about to watch are based on some of the training courses developed by the National Highway Institute, in particular, the Introduction to Highway Hydraulics course, NHI course 135065, and the Culvert Design course, NHI course 135056. I've been an instructor for National Highway Institute training courses for 25 years. I completed my undergraduate engineering degree at Purdue University and did my master's and PhD at Colorado State. The videos are based on demonstrations and experiments that we do primarily in these two training courses, built around a portable flume. The flume is six inches wide and approximately five feet long and recirculates water from a 30 gallon sump. The videos, there are six of them to watch. The recommended order in which to watch those videos, first open channel flow concepts, then great inlets, culvert hydraulic concepts, hydraulic effects of culvert liners, aquatic organism passage design concepts, and energy dissipators for culverts. Thank you for your interest in Federal Highway Administration training. I hope you find this video series helpful in completing highway drainage design projects. This video demonstrates great inlets commonly used in storm drain design. The great inlets we're going to use are based on Federal Highway Administration standards presented in Hydraulic Engineering Circular Number 22, Urban Drainage Design. These are standard designs, typically a two by two foot grate. I have them placed in a street section that simulates a 2% cross slope and on a model scale, a six inch high curb. We want to look at the amount of flow intercepted, the distance to complete interception, whether or not we have any splash over velocity occurring, water going beyond the end of the grate, and an important concept in grate design is the frontal flow versus the side flow. We'll see that most of the flow approaching the grate is intercepted. The flow going by the side tends to continue on down the street. The first grate we're going to look at is the parallel bar grate. The parallel bar grate is a common inlet design that's been used for many years. It is hydraulically very efficient, intercepting most all of the water very close to the beginning of the grate. As you can see, we're getting complete interception of the frontal flow very close to the beginning of the grate. We see the side flow continuing on down the street section. This is common of any grate inlet designed and installed on grade. The frontal flow is a very important design factor a grate that's wider is going to perform better hydraulically than a grate that is longer because of the frontal flow conditions. One disadvantage of any grate is it must be installed in the correct orientation. So if the grate is turned 90 degrees, we see that the hydraulic performance is diminished. Now we're seeing water close to halfway down the grate. <clears throat> we still don't have any splash over, so this grate's performing okay at, at this flow condition. We still have the side flow. Another complication when the grate is installed incorrectly is in this orientation, it's gonna trap more debris coming down the street section, and that will further diminish the hydraulic performance. So the parallel bar grate, hydraulically very efficient when it's installed in the right direction. But a disadvantage of a parallel bar grate is that it's not very bicycle safe. The bar spacing is wide enough that a bike tire could fall through the bars, creating a hazard for a bike rider. That led to research by the Federal Highway Administration in the 1970s to de develop both hydraulically efficient 
and bicycle safe great designs. One of the first options was taking that same parallel bar grate and installing transverse rods or cross rods to make the, the grate hydraulically efficient and bicycle safe. As we see the installation of the transverse rods really didn't diminish the hydraulic performance. We're still getting complete interception very near the front edge of the grate. Of course we see the same bypass flow going down the street section but the grate is hydraulically very efficient. It does suffer again like most grates if it's not installed in the right direction from its hydraulic performance. Now we see water about halfway down the grate. Still no splash over of any significance but certainly more debris trapping when the bars are not parallel to the flow. So the parallel bar grate with the transverse rods is hydraulically very efficient and also bicycle safe. A variation of that design concept was the narrow parallel bar grate. Very similar in design, it's just the bars are closer together. This grate when installed performs very similar to the parallel bar. The narrow parallel bar captures nearly all the flow, all the flow very near the front edge of the grate. We see the same flow bypassing out on the street section. No splash over occurring. And like most grates though, when installed 90 degrees incorrectly, now we see we're down to a half, maybe two thirds before we get complete interception. And certainly on a narrow parallel bar with those bars being closer together, installed incorrectly like this, we're gonna have significantly more debris issues. So the narrow parallel bar, hydraulically efficient and bicycle safe. Another design concept is called the reticulin grate. It's more of a honeycomb type structure on the grate design. This grate performs reasonably well, and perhaps not as good as the parallel bar. As you see, we're, we're down around a third to maybe a half for total interception with the grate installed in the correct orientation. We're still seeing the flow along the side, the so-called side flow continuing down the street section. When we turn this grate 90 degrees, the performance doesn't suffer too much, mostly because the grate is not as hydraulically efficient to begin with. A disadvantage, and, and many DOTs don't like this grate because it is more trouble with debris. With that tight of a honeycomb structure, a lot of debris is captured on the grate even when it's installed in the correct orientation. Another design concept that would at maybe first appear to work quite well is the diagonal bar. I was surprised the first time we put this grate in the flume and saw that it really isn't as hydraulically efficient as you might think. Even with the grate oriented, so the bars would tend to push the flow towards the curb section, we find that its hydraulic performance is not as you might expect. As you can see, we're now getting some splash over. We're getting some water going beyond the end of the grate. The diagonal bars are not really directing the flow to the curb section as you might expect. Of course, we've still got the side flow going on down the street section. And this grate as well, if it's put in in a different orientation, suffers. It's not as dramatic as a more hydraulically efficient grate and I have to hold this one in place because of the grate design. But as you can see we get quite a bit of bypass, splice overflow as we call it, as the flow continues beyond the end of the grate. We're not getting a hundred percent interception like we do on the more hydraulically efficient grate designs. There are many variations of a diagonal bar in use throughout the country depending on the manufacturer. Different bar spacing, my 
conclusion is none of them will probably perform as well as you think. Certainly the best and the most hydraulically efficient design is the, the parallel bar. However, there are two other options that are both very similar in design concept. One's called a tilt bar, the other's called a curved vane. The words describe pretty much the direction and the orientation of the veins on these grates. The tilt bar is what it sounds like. It has bars that are tilted to intercept more flow. The bars are straight, they are tapered, but they are straight as opposed to a curved vein. So I'll insert the tilt bar first and we'll see hydraulic performance very similar to the parallel bar grate, if not even a little bit better. The same concern with the flow going down the, the street section, the, the so-called side flow compared to the frontal flow. One big issue with this style vein is if it gets put in the wrong direction, the hydraulic performance is surprisingly poor. In fact, now we're seeing very little interception of water. We have a lot of splash over. We have quite a bit of water going beyond the end of the grate. This is a common characteristic of this grate design. And one thing that manufacturers do to try to prevent that is to stamp an arrow in the casting pointing to the curb or to put some kind of a key on the grate to align with the frame. And yet it is still possible at times for this grate to be installed incorrectly. We had one DOT that had just installed these types of grates on a large um, highway drainage project, about 100 catch basins. The contractor wasn't sure which way to put the grates in, and so they went every other grate with one installed correctly, the next one incorrectly. The same performance is true of the curve vein. Again, very similar in design concept, but the vein is actually curved as opposed to being straight. Hydraulically very efficient and very bicycle safe. Capturing 100% of the flow very near the leading edge of the grate. Still seeing the usual amount of side flow, but 100% interception of what we call the frontal flow until we turn the grate the wrong direction. And as with the tilt bar, we see quite a bit of flow going beyond the end of the grate. A lot of splash over, very little interception, even of the frontal flow. So the tilt bar and the curved vein, hydraulically, very efficient and bicycle safe. The demonstrations we've done are all for a street section on grade. But of course, these same grates are used in a sump condition. In a sump, a grate is typically operating at weir flow under low discharge and orifice flow under high discharge. So at low flow depths, water coming into the sump sees this grate opening as a three-sided weir and we use the weir equation. At higher flows, when water starts to pond over the top of the grate, it begins to act more like an orifice. All of the design equations for the grates that we've reviewed are presented in hydraulic engineering circular number 22. For grates on grade, there are equations describing the frontal flow interception versus the side flow. For grates in a sump, there are equations for when it's operating in weir versus when it's operating in orifice flow condition or the transition in between. If your grates do not match the standards that are in Federal Highway Hydraulic Engineering Circular Number 22, you will not have the design equations in which to evaluate the, the interception capability of a given grate design. You would need to have model study tests done on a different design concept to really know exactly how a grate's gonna operate when it's installed out in the field. Those equations and those relationships are also uh, are implemented in the Federal Highway Administration software program, the Hydraulic Toolbox, which is a collection of utility programs useful for doing highway drainage design. 
Thank you for your interest in this Federal Highway Administration video. I hope you found the information on great inlet design concepts useful and helpful in your highway drainage design projects.